Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Cessna Sky Carrier completes initial wind tunnel testing. The Sporties Foundation releases its annual report for 2017. And DA planes collide on the ground at Palatka, Florida Airport. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 21st, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Initial wind tunnel testing of the new twin-engine Cessna Sky Carrier turboprop has been completed. Results from the comprehensive wind tunnel test will provide performance and aerodynamic characteristics and structural load data, further finalizing the aircraft design. For the initial wind tunnel testing, we use a custom precision model with electric motors and scaled propellers calibrated to represent the thrust produced by the real aircraft, said Brad Thress, Senior Vice President of Engineering. We're making outstanding progress in the development of this clean sheet aircraft and are eager to continue defining the details that will allow us to start creating tools and parts. Since Texan Aviation announced the Cessna Sky Carrier in November 2017, the company is garnering feedback from its customer advisory board, empowering operators to affirm what customers need in this segment. The company is anticipating first flight of the Cessna Sky Courier in 2019, with entry into service in 2020. After the break, next week's AEA 2018 Airborne Schedule. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news spy at aero news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call around the patch. It's that time of year again when the Aero News crew ventures out for some special coverage projects. And next week we'll be covering the Aircraft Electronics Association annual convention and trade show live via airborne-live.net. What that means is that Airborne will not webcast next week while the entire crew is livecasting from AEA but we'll be returning the following week. Our AEA coverage will feature all the exciting news of the avionics industry. So do check us out at airborne-live.net and join us for live comprehensive coverage of AEA 2018. A milestone was reached by the EAA on March 8th as 50,000 young eagles have now taken the next step in their aviation journeys by enrolling in Sporty's Learn to Fly course after their EAA Young Eagles flights. More than 2 million young people have been introduced to airplanes and aviation through Young Eagles, and 50,000 of them have been enrolled in Sporty's Learn to Fly course to pursue their aviation dream, said Michael Wolf, president and CEO of Sporty's. Thousands of Boeing employees gathered at the company's Renton, Washington factory last week to celebrate the 10,737 to come off the production line. With this airplane, a 737 MAX 8 for Southwest Airlines, the 737 has broken the Guinness World Records title for the most produced commercial jet aircraft model. The Civil Aviation Administration of China has granted three new type certificate validations to Continental Motors Group, authorizing the use of the company's compression ignition engines in China for three of the most popular airframes in general aviation. These certificates allow Chinese customers to order airframes directly from the aircraft manufacturer, with a Continental CD100 series Jet A burning power plant, or to retrofit their existing fleet with these engines. 
Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Sporties Foundation may bequest totaling $284,900 during 2017 to fulfill its goal to attract young people to the aviation community. The foundation issued its most recent annual report, which may be seen online at sportiesfoundation.org. The Sporties Foundation remains among the largest donors to EAA's Young Eagles program, both from a financial commitment as well as by making Sporties award-winning Learn to Fly course available at no charge to all Young Eagles. The number of Young Eagles who have accessed this course recently surpassed 50,000. The Sporties Foundation has focused STEM activities and has funded numerous scholarships during 2017. During 2017, the Sporties Foundation also assumed total responsibility for funding the scholarships for aviation exploring. We invite our donors and potential donors to examine our IRS Form 990, which will show that not one cent is paid for administrative costs for our foundation. These costs are assumed by Sporty's Pilot Shop, which means 100% of every donated dollar goes to the program, not overhead, said Sporty's founder and chairman, Hal Shevers. Online contributions are being accepted either as a one-time payment or a reoccurring monthly donation. As a 501c3 foundation, all donations are tax deductible. After these messages, GA planes collide on the ground at Palatka, Florida Airport. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. Two Cirrus aircraft were involved in an accident at Palakia Municipal Airport late last week. There were three people on board the two airplanes, but no one was injured, according to authorities. An SR-22 was being flown by 40-year-old Robert Jack Daniel Meyer, a former member of the Jacksonville Jaguars NFL team. The other aircraft was being flown by 29-year-old Lou Andres Salvador Zom of DeLand. The passenger aboard the SR-20 was Xiao Wang, 28 of Sanford. The FAA said that the SR-20 landed on runway 27 at 28J first, and the SR-22 landed on top of the other airplane. No other details were provided. This is reportedly the third GA accident to occur in Putnam County, Florida in three weeks. In late February, a single-engine airplane went down in St. John's River near Fort Gates Ferry, resulting in the fatal injury of the two men on board. On March 6, a single-engine plane went down in the backyard of a residence about a mile from the airport, injuring two people. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.